Yeah, let's come to the uh, Bode plot. That is um, the next part of this I block discussion. Uh, the Bode plot, as mentioned in th chapter 3.6, is nothing else than the transfer function. Transfer function where I dis uh, exchange all p's with j omega or set sigma to zero. In our case, very simple, this is ki divided by j omega. And we need the magnitude function. The magnitude of a complex function is uh, calculatable with the Pythagoras. That is the real part squared plus imaginary part squared of our function. Um, normally, you have to get the real part and the imaginary part. Uh, you have learned that you have to um, make a uh, conjugate complex uh, multiplication in the denominator to get the uh, real part and imaginary part uh, in separate versions. What you should learn here today is that if our transfer function, if f of p is given as a, a quotient of a numerator function of p divided to a denominator function of p, then of course the complex frequency function is the numerator where p is replaced with j omega divided by the denominator where p all p's are replaced by the j omega and the magnitude of a, a function like this the magnitude is of course this but with um, the following knowledge it is more easy to calculate magnitudes of this type of functions because the magnitude of a ratio is nothing else as a ratio of the magnitudes yeah you can do this that is correct. Yeah. Uh, calculate the magnitude of the numerator and divide by the magnitude of the denominator. That is, in many cases, much more easier than with this conjugate complex expansion method. That's then to get more complicated expressions. The same is with the phase. Yeah. Uh, the phase of a complex number is, as you know it, is the arc tangent, arc tangent of the uh, ratio of the imaginary part of the function divided by the uh, real part of the function. For this, you also need yeah separate uh, imaginary and real parts uh, to get with a conjugate complex expansion. Uh, but then this uh, is not necessary if you know the following trick. The following trick is uh, calculate the uh, face of the numerator and calculate the face of the denominator separately and then subtract both phases. Yeah, face numerator minus face denominator or in other words you can write it in the following way. This is the uh, arc tangent function of the uh, imaginary part of the numerator divided by the real part of the numerator minus arc tangent imaginary part of the denominator divided by the real part of the denominator. This is in many cases much more easier than uh, the standard elements you have learned in uh, mathematical lectures. In our case it is very simple. In our case you can say okay uh, the magnitude function of our integrator is ki magnitude. Yeah, Magnitude of the numerator is ki magnitude is ki, the, the real number. The magnitude of a real number is the real number itself. And the magnitude of the denominator is just imaginary part j omega. The magnitude is if the real part is zero uh, the square root of the squared imaginary part, which is the imaginary part itself, it's omega. Yeah, that is the 
magnitude and the phase is phase of a numerator which is zero minus arctangent 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 imaginary part of the denominator is omega divided by real part of the uh, denominator which is zero yeah okay what is this if you divide by zero this is infinity arctangent of infinity is defined which is 90 degree so we get minus 90 degree uh, note in this lecture in this lecture I want to use I, I want to use phase values in, in degrees phase in degrees not in right so you have to set up your calculator in that way that if you type in an arctangent uh, value uh, then you uh, should read the phase value and not the uh, radian value. So you can very easily test your calculator if uh, your calculator is set to degree or to uh, phase, uh, to uh, rad, just I show it with the Windows uh, calculator. Uh, switch to wissenschaftlich, scientific, uh, then type win a one and go to trigonometric uh, second, uh, this is tangent, so if you get arc tangent 1 is 0 0.7 this is a quarter of pi then that is wrong please switch to grad to degree <coughs> if you do the same uh, the, uh, type in in one go to uh, the second trigonometric uh, arc tangent then this is 50 degree <laughs> that is a new 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 degree that's also wrong so click a third time here and then uh, go to uh, arc to, to one and click to arc tangent then 45 and this is this is okay yeah degree not in grad degree is that what you want test it arc tangent one must be 45 <coughs> test arc tangent one must be 45 degree Okay, uh, now uh, let's draw the Bode plot. You see, the magnitude curve is a one a parameter over x. One over x is a hyperbolic curve in linear case. But you know, I want to uh, draw the magnitude curve with dB values. So this is f magnitude in db <clears throat> and this is logarithmic omega uh, we have a logarithmic axis of omega but it is common to uh, mark uh, the uh, values here not as logarithmic values of omega but omega itself so we can say okay there is uh, a, a mark a very important mark where we can say okay let's look for the value ki ki is a frequency note that yeah ki is an inverse of the time constant ti so this is a, if this is a second a few physical unit seconds then this is frequency um, so this is a frequency and if omega is equal ki then you see f magnitude is 1 and 1 in db value is 0 db so we have a point here okay let's go to a different frequency say i now go one decade smaller to smaller values then we can say okay this distance is a decade factor 10 decay we call it factor 10 uh, if omega is now 10 times smaller than <coughs> a ki then the division by 10 times smaller values is 10 times larger then f magnitude is 10 that means we have here a point 
which is factor 10 in db is 20 db. Okay, the same we can do in <coughs> the other direction. If we go the same distance to the right side as we have done to the left side, then we will find that this is uh, also a decade, uh, then we are 10 times larger. Yeah, that's again a decade. And we can find out if <coughs> ki is now 10 times larger than uh, omega is 10 times 10 times ki, then this is 1 over 10, and then we have a value which is in logarithmic db value negative 20 db. And you see, <coughs> if this distance and this distance is equal, this distance and this distance is equal, then we can find very easily that this is now um, a straight line curve. And we, we can say this, this curve here is a gradient, has a gradient uh, of <coughs> minus 20 dB each decade. That means if we are uh, 10 times larger, next decade we are at minus 40 dB, or here, next decade here we are at plus 40 dB, and so on. So each decade the, the magnitude changes with uh, 20 dB. Uh, okay, what uh, we can ask, how large is a DC value? Large is DC gain uh, omega zero. We know uh, the magnitude value is then uh, Ki divided by uh, zero, and this is infinity. So the magnitude value is infinity. Please don't forget this value is not the DC value. Yeah, this is not the DC value. DC is not on the screen. Then we have to go very far to the left side, infinitely far away from the left to the left side. We have then an infinitely large DC gain because we here divide by zero. Okay, so we can say uh, the magnitude curve is easy. What happens if k changes? Yeah, if k i k i um, <coughs> if ki changes, what happens? Uh, let's uh, say ki is doubled. Then this value is doubled. Go one step to the, the one octave. We can say to the left side, to the right side. Then this is doubled, and this is doubled. Uh, so this complete curve is shifted. The gradient is unchanged, shifted away, because in the gradient, the ki is not existent. The gradient for all integrators in the world is always minus 20 dB over decade, and ki defines the position. Um, curve is shifted. Is shifted. No? Gradient is the same. Gradient is unchanged. Okay, um, the face is easy, a constant line at minus 90 degree. So if we look again in our um, in table, let's check if we can find all information back in that system. Uh, integrator is row 4. Uh, the name is i, that is a symbol, ki on the top left, ti is not written here. That as a system transfer function, this is the a RAM function for the output. We have calculated it. Uh, note here, this is a one after one ti because it's a unit step function. Here, negative 20 dB over decade. This is not DC value, and this is minus 90 degree uh, negative constant line. Uh, this frequency, KF frequency, has now a name because this curve crosses the zero dB line. We call this unity gain frequency or crossover frequency. That is the two possible names. Let's uh, just note them in our um, paper. Ki 
has a name unity gain frequency, unity gain uh, radian frequency. The radian is often not uh, mentioned, radian frequency. Or, or crossover frequency, because the curve crosses over the zero dB line at this frequency. Crossover frequency. Okay, <clears throat> this is the integrator, and I think enough information for this integrator. Yeah, I want to conclude with an example, with a numerical value example. Example to give you some numbers. Uh, let's see, use just all unity gain values. Let's say uh, uh, the resistance is one kilo ohm, capacitance is one microfarad, typical standard values, then automatically the Ti is the product of one times one is one kilo uh, <coughs> times micros milli. We have a time constant of one millisecond. Uh, so Ki is the inverse of one millisecond is please say not one kilohertz say 1000 per second then the ki is a radian frequency the unity gain radian frequency uh, and we can say okay in uh, the uh, diagram at uh, 1000 per second we have zero db uh, <coughs> Question, uh, how large, how large is output amplitude, output amplitude, um, if input, input amplitude is one volt and frequency is one hertz or uh, oh, say one one kilohertz say one kilohertz one kilohertz uh, we can uh, calculate this the output amplitude b in uh, our discussion of chapter three six uh, chapter three six note that B is the amplitude of the sinusoidal signal for the output, A is the amplitude for the sinusoidal signal of the input. So B is calculatable with A times magnitude F at given frequency. Say this is F1. So this is F at omega 1 magnitude. This is Ki divided by omega 1. This is Ki is 1000 per second divided by 2 times pi times F1 and F1 is 1 kilohertz. Then you see uh, the uh, 1 kilohertz is then uh, deleted with this 1000 per second and you see the amplitude is uh, one volt a uh, one volt times one divided by two pi so the output amplitude is uh, 0.159 volt so all values are ones but the output amplitude is not the same than input that is one kilohertz is not the unity gain frequency uh, but a frequency which is much um, higher then unity gain to pi higher, so the amplitude, amplitude B is of course uh, with two factor of two pi smaller. Okay, and the phase shift is minus ninety. Uh, okay. Uh, the next block in the third case is a D block. Uh, the D block uh, name comes from D uh, like differentiating. Differentiator. Um, if an integrator integrates the input signal, the differentiator differentiate it. Uh, now I will show you that um, the circuit for this, a possible circuit, could be my integrator with 
exchanged impedances. Now the capacitor is the input impedance and the resistor is the feedback impedance. Uh, in this case, uh, you will see is the transfer function the inverse of the integrator, uh, inverse of the integrator, and this is of course the differentiator. This is U1, output voltage uh, U2 with a trick from ground to signal output uh, show, uh, showing the arrow. This is R, this is C, and the transfer function of this circuit is with a hidden minus sign feedback impedance divided by the input impedance, and you see then this is P times R times C, and again we can say the product of R and C is a time constant, so we have a differentiating time constant. We now indicate this time constant with a D because this is a time constant of the differentiator. Other people, other colleagues, uh, write a differentiator with a K factor. In this case, is TD and KD the same? KD is then uh, the time constant of the differentiator. Yeah? In opposite to the integrator, where K and T, uh, KI and TI are inverse. Yeah? In this case, KI is 1 over TI. Here, TD is equal KD. So be careful with using the K factors. I prefer normally the time constants, and this is a little bit more clear. Okay, um, the step response looks like this. Step response. Input signal again in frequency is U sub O times um, 1 over P. Um, then you, the, the step response is product of input signal times here this or that system function. So we have um, u sub o divided by p times um, or td times p. So you see the p factor can be eliminated. And we have just a constant number, u sub o times td. This is a frequency function. The question is, what is the corresponding time function? Uh, let's look into the um, table, page 9, and then you will see what happens. Uh, I give you a small help here. I multiply with a 1 to show you that this is a constant factor of which function, the function is just the number 1. And if we look into our uh, table value at page 9, then you will see um, the frequency function 1 relates to the delta impulse. Yeah, so the step response in our case of the differentiator is ideally, we can say, ideally is u sub o times td is volt times second, a volt second, multiplied with the um, delta impulse. Um, let's check the physical units. Uh, u2 is the voltage, clear. Uh, u sub o is the voltage, okay. Td is a time, so this is voltage multiplied with time. But note that the physical unit of a delta impulse is a 1 over time, so the physical unit of delta multiplied with Td is 1. So, of course, on the right side we have, again, a voltage. Um, okay, nice. We have now built a direct impulse generator. Because theoretically, yeah, the output of a step response the output, uh, the response of a step function is this, uh, is this um, delta impulse. Input is just a battery with a switch. Output is a delta impulse. That's nice. But please yeah, uh, note that this is in theory possible, but not in real life. In real life happens the following thing. And that uh, is that what 
uh, differentiating circuit cost as problems. Uh, if we draw this over time, ut over time, we can say, okay, in green, this is theory. Let's make it a little bit thicker. In green, yeah. the direct impulse, as the direct impulse is marked with an arrow and indicated with <coughs> indicated with the area area the area of this direct impulse is u sub otd because uh, u sub otd because the area of a direct impulse is uh, one and so this is gives the area uh, what happens with uh, real life yeah uh, i draw this with red real life is a red curve then we can say okay zero uh, is the beginning of course it's no problem then we have not an uh, infinitely steep impulse but we have an impulse which has a limited uh, gradient um, we can say the gradient here gradient comes from uh, the slow rate yeah, look into your data sheet uh, look for the row in your data sheet which is called slew rate then you know how many volt per microsecond the operational operational amplifier needs for the uh, fastest increase for the output next step is you uh, run into a saturation uh, saturation uh, the positive uh, supply voltage and then the saturation then is uh, yeah, changed to zero after some time. This time depends on internal uh, storages of voltages, and this depends on the yeah, internal capacitance of the um, operational amplifier. Yeah? Of course, here we assume an ideal operational amplifier, but an ideal operational amplifier has a slow rate, has a saturation as the output, and had some time to differentiate and we can say this area is absolutely not u sub o t d so your um, circuit where you use this one and if you have here a step function here uh, has an output which is absolutely different to the theory so you should avoid a differentiator if you are Input voltages have step uh, function uh, behavior because then, if this is a step function, the theory and the measurement differs in a big with the big differences. Yeah? Then you have you cannot predict the reaction of the circuit because the real life output is totally different to the uh, expected output. That is not the case in the uh, integrator. Uh, this ramp uh, is very accurate, exactly uh, identical to uh, measurements. Uh, of course, yeah, I have not mentioned this. Um, of course, the initial values zero sometimes must be forced with additional components in the circuit. For example, a switch which can unload the capacitor. Now, if you end the first measurement and the capacitor is loaded to uh, the supply voltage. If you want to repeat this uh, step in response, then of course you have unload the capacitor uh, with a switch of the cable, and then you can restart the measurement. Yeah. Then theory of integrator is very good, predicted with uh, a good prediction if to the real measurement. That is not the case in differentiating behavior. Um, in spite of this, there is a symbol, a symbol of the differentiator, which looks like the following picture. Um, that is a vertical line here, but also a horizontal line here. So this is the symbol of the differentiator with the KD on the top left side or the TD on the other side. This is the D block, yeah, D block symbol. The 
uh, border plot. Again, some few words to the border plot before I stop this discussion, stop this video. The border plot is easy to draw because the magnitude function is simple the magnitude of kd times omega uh, because p is replaced with j omega and j omega is pure imaginary and the uh, mag magnitude yeah uh, j omega and the magnitude of kd j omega is of course kd omega itself uh, the phase is constant plus 90 degree opposite to the integrator the integrator is minus 90 differentiator is plus 90 constant and okay in linear uh, <coughs> amplitude diagram of course this is also a straight line but in a border plot uh, again we have <coughs> a straight line curve in this way so this is f magnitude in db horizontal axis is log omega and yeah the crossover frequency how large is this that is that point where the magnitude is 0 db factor 1 that means uh, which frequency radiant frequency we must have if this should be 1 of course then omega crossover is 1 over kd the inverse of the kd value is the crossover frequency of a differentiator the gradient is of course then gradient is plus 20 db over decade that is easy to see if i um, go a decade higher uh, then we have the value 10 over kd uh, then uh, if you replace omega with 10 divided by kd this is 10 and 20 db uh, time 20 db by the logarithmic function of 10 base to 10 is 1 so this is of course 20 db and with other points you can prove this very quickly then uh, that you have here a straight line curve with this gradient plus 20 db over a decade um, last quick view on page 16 of the d-block if we have something forgotten then we can uh, see this maybe in our uh, page 16 table um, row 6 differentiator symbol transfer function ideal unit step response and uh, magnitude curve of the border diagram, diagram with plus 20 db over decade crossover frequency 1 over kd min, uh, plus 90 degree phase shift uh, independent of frequency yeah so we have covered all points and can stop here the video in the next video then we will look to a first order low pass filter which is called pt1